Hello, hello, this is Steve D of the YYT, and today I finally got my hands on Opus 14 boxes. I'm about to open a case for your viewing and or ASMR pleasure, and I promise not to do that terrible YouTuber thing where I open Full Art Cloud and then do backflips and throw my furniture against the walls. Civilised entertainment only here. So these boxes are all sealed, which means we should have the pre-release promo in the top, and I usually begin these kind of videos by talking a little bit about the promos, and I'll call out any interesting cards. If you haven't seen the set reviews yet, or you've... Uh, you've wanted to avoid any kind of spoilers, maybe to go into a pre-release blind, then this is maybe a chance to catch up on some of my opinions of cards. And also some of the cards I didn't have the pleasure of set reviewing myself. So first off we've got the very beautiful Barrett, bit of the FF7 remake love there in the artwork. I am not convinced by this Barrett as a card. In fact I would say this is the first pre-release promo since probably... Uh, Probably ever, if I'm perfectly honest. I think this is the first pre-release promo that's close to unplayable in the set that it's come out. Back in Opus 7, we'd got Noctis as the first sort of global pre-release promo. Before I'm not going to count the Ustola and the Race Velger from before that, but yeah, Barrett just doesn't really have the support in this set. But this is a card to watch and a card to stockpile three copies of for when the Opus 14.5 starter decks Avalanche vs Shinra finally appear. I think that at that point we'll finally have enough Avalanche cards for him to maybe have some kind of utility. But uh, yeah, right now, not really his time to shine. Who do we have here? First pack, amazing. We've got Foil Gutsko. In my opinion, this is the best card of the set and it's not even a legend. The amount of advantage that this guy generates just by entering the field, just by attacking once he's already made profit. He's like a Viking from Layla Viking but actually has decent body size. And uh, yeah, very reminiscent of like Opus 4 Legend Lock in that it's a card that accumulates card advantage just by attacking. And there are very, very few ways, all of which require significant play around and timing and nuance. Not, not many ways to play around his card accumulation. The other hero in the pack, Trapdoor. I do like it. Uh, it's kind of limited to Mono Lightning, but uh, for a Mono Lightning card, it's very good. Foil Moogle and uh, Preach as our hero here. I think Prish has kind of missed a trick. I don't think it would have been too powerful if it was allowed to be cheated into play. There is a clause that says you can only do Prish's on entry ability if you actually paid the cost, and I think that's maybe a little bit too harsh. Uh, Golbez looks like a, a fun meme hero. I look forward to building around it. I do like cards that can play stuff straight from deck or straight off the top of the deck. We don't talk about King of Eblin. Zeromus, very powerful hero. There are a lot of games that are going to be swung by just what he does by playing him on turn one. Discard, discard, play him turn one. Freeze your opponent's backup. Decks that really rely on hitting four or five backups like YRP or sort of Storm style decks, they're really going to struggle when Zeromus is taxing right from turn one. Kind of reminiscent of uh, White Tiger Z Nimbus, but two turns faster. Rosa, another amazing hero for Storm. Looks like a really good card. And we've got a foil Shantotto. Suffers the unfortunate curse of being called Shantotto, which makes it... I guess not every deck is going to have the room or the inclination to play the Shantotto, but a backup that draws two cards and taps for two colours of CP and is in a relevant category. Very good. Card selection is hot. We've got a Foily Paladin, but maybe the exciting part here is Machiri, another hero that feels very much like a legend. Mashiri is going to totally reinvent the way a lot of decks are played. There are already, or as, as Opus 13 ended, we've got very cool decks like the 15 forwards Doga Sophie lists. Mashiri slots right into those because she appreciates when you're already running 20 or 20 or more summons for ulterior motives. We've got a foily chivalry, not quite as cool as the full art, and our first legend of the box is Larsa. Larsa looks good to me. I think that uh, it's quite unique that he offers a, a zone that previously we couldn't interact with. I think it's very interesting that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of combos you can play with him and, and, and uh, stick relevant cards in your damage zone with an EX burst to then repeat later with Axstar. Interesting, but uh, difficult to tell how useful he's going to be because I suppose part of Larsa's utility is always going to be random. Calbrenna, I think I'm in the minority who really loves this art. I think it's got a nice sort of horrific edge to it. And we've got a foily friend that I'll never use. Some really good heroes and rares. I feel like I'm doing this set a little bit of an injustice by skipping over so many of the heroes and rares. I might make a little pile of heroes and rares I think are really worth calling out. Certainly Ifrit looks amazing in mono fire. There are now so many ways to build mono fire that it's not just limited to, you know, samurais or marsh rips and stuff like that. I think that sort of general board ping really appreciates the primals. The primals are very good this time around.
I'm going to move the foils up as well just so you can see them a little bit. And Wall as well. This guy can sneak uh, Braska's final Aeon into play. You can sneak Yasma into play. 7 CP for Sawyer. There's going to be some very cool high rolly decks that I think are going to straddle the meme and meta bridge quite nicely. Cool ability. Susano, Lord of the Revel, and Gesho, another really powerful pair of heroes. I'm sticking all my foils in one pile here, uh, but Susano is a great card. Gesho as well is a, a... I think that the problem that Fire Lightning had in previous sets was it was very reactive, not a very proactive deck. And you'd got loads of ways of killing your opponent's board, but nothing to kind of obligate your opponent to, uh, to, to play their board out. And the threat of Gesho ripping the best card out of your opponent's hand for all eternity is quite high. I do like Lakshmi. I think Lakshmi is a very powerful primal. Kind of like Ash, you know, 7k, draws you a card every turn, draw three every turn. Sounds good. Less prerequisites, less of a top end. Lusso is a garbage hero for now. I'm not particularly hyped there. But we've got a foil legend van. Very pretty. The card, not necessarily van, but you know, I won't judge. New Leviathan looks very good as well. I wasn't too sold on it at first until I realised that it lets you recur Porom and Porom lets you recur it. Got another copy of Gutsko here. Great hero. I'm really hoping I can get a couple of playsets across my boxes. Foil Kuja, nothing too much to write home about. Any other really good uh, commons or rares worth calling out here? Oh, I thought that was uh, Stern Leonis. Not particularly. I think Sephiroth's quite reasonable. Good at uh, slowing down an aggressive deck, forcing a discard and freezing a forward. Definitely has uh, enough text that some of the words have got to be good. We've got a Sarah and we've got another incredibly handsome trapdoor. Chocomog is quite cool. I do like Ovjang. I've got a very soft spot for Ovjang. Being able to recur Illua specials and stuff like that. Seems good to me. Basically all of these backups, uh, I hated them at first but I'm kind of warming to them now. Some elements more than others. I don't think water necessarily needs the filtering. Third Legend, copy of Alcid, and we've got a Foil Aerith that's definitely going to go in some kind of YRP or Toxic Wind variant. Protect Bismarck until the end of time, Bound to Pain a million times, seems good. Gilgamesh FFBE looks like it's going to be the other Foil Legend in this box. Looked a bit like a meme, it's actually quite powerful, it's got a pretty good top end. Uh, I, I think that uh, attacking three times and dulling and freezing three things puts you on a very uh, quick clock. Ramu's another really good hero. The rather forgotten Raiden Revenant Wings from Opus 10 is kind of a one-sided board wipe so long as Ramu lives through it resolving. Ravis is reasonable, Stern Leonis is even more reasonable. Big fan of the card. Stern Leonis, just like Machiri, does some unfair things if you build your deck a very odd way around it. I think it takes rather a long time for Stern Leonis to recuperate his 4 CP cost if you're playing him in a fair deck, but a sort of play all the forwards kind of deck that's, uh, you know, something like the sort of Verstale Fire Ice. Looks like a natural home. Susano, another nice hero. Stick that in the hero pile. And a foil Stern Leonis. Actually quite a good foil. I don't know if the camera really does it justice. Better than I was expecting. I do like the Vieira backups as a sort of alternative or supplement to Nrush Dalen. Certainly if there's any incentive to play Mono Wind with the Primals, I would be surprised if the new Vieira engine wasn't uh, well, one of the reasons to do so. Spell Fodder feels a little bit limp as a hero for me. I do wish it was either multiplay or discarded a card on entry and then became a forward later on. The fact that it's just so difficult to turn into a dude and then kill it off for some kind of thing representing value and then you only then does your opponent discard a card. Not convinced by it, but it's cool that Sid Wolf can bring it back. Garuda I like as well. I think that's one of the heroes and oh sorry, yeah, commons and rares worth talking about. Looks like a format that might be dominated by 9Ks, which means things that can kill 9Ks and offer some kind of profit look pretty good. Potentially a 3 for 1. Shantoto's nice. Chocomog remains to be seen. Chocobog's prerequisite is actually quite easy to meet. You need to have a, a Moogle and a Chocobo in play when it resolves for you to draw a card. Oh, full art, full art van, how nice. Really interesting alternate frame that isn't on the, the regular card, you know? It's just interesting that the full art adds in this interesting border. Nice. And Jekt as the hero of the pack. Van's nice, but he's no cloud, right? We'll see. We've got a lot of packs to get through. Octomammoth, cool hero. And a samurai, uh, probably meta in some sense common. 
I think that Samurais lose a little bit of real estate this opus with things like Shinra as a potential tech card, but I think Samurais as the incredibly simple just play all the Samurais variant got a whole load better as a deck, and I suppose that worries me. Play set of Stern Leonis in a single box, that's pretty good. And a Foily Devout. I'll stick a Leviathan here as a reminder that it's a good card. I'm not blown away by Red 13 yet, I think it's just too fairly designed. I think it would have been a, a stronger card and probably a better card if it was multiplayable, or maybe it didn't even need that fire CP on entry. Maybe something like turn one Sephiroth off a of backup would have been too toxic, I don't know. Cobalt looks okay, but for the time being we've only got the one Earth Primal, so it only really has one use case. Foil Jacked and a nice little cartoony Zidane. I think Zidane looks a little bit win more. It's going to take an awful lot of replacing to get the heroic from Opus 3 out of the format. I've stopped resenting that card. I now think it keeps the really unfair decks a little bit in check. I think that if you're playing a fair deck, there is no card you would rather see against an unfair deck than Zidane to try and slow down your opponent's combo state for a couple of turns. Typhon, great hero. Nice, nice. Very pleased. Emperor looks okay in Mono Ice. I think that uh, a 5k that you can play from outside your hand that then draws you a card and doesn't cost you mana. Quite reasonable. We'll see if there's some kind of turbo mill variant that makes it really good. Rosh, hate it. Uh, I really don't like the card design. I really don't like uh, these cards that you're supposed to see on turn one or never. Not wild about it, but if you do like playing hasty weenie deck, then effectively a free point of damage if you go first is pretty good. We've got a Legend Titan and a Foil Camelon up. Very pretty. Titan is another one of these uh, alternatives to Shantotto. Maybe you want to play the new Heroic Shantotto to draw two cards off a backup and then Titan can be your board wipe, but there's a lot of things that uh, can reach 9,000 in power that he's not going to board wipe without significant effort. And there's our other full art. Ramu. Kind of cat looking Ramu. Mombom is our hero. And a foil Mombom. Supplemented by Legend Omega. I've heard a few people comparing Omega to partly Necron for some sort of I'm going to win outside of combat deck, and also Sophie. <laughs> Omega is nowhere near as good as Sophie. Partly the dark element is a real downside. There are more downsides to being dark than upside, and a 5 CP 10k dies to more stuff than Sophie does efficiently. Lugay is pretty good. Ramu. I think I was more impressed by the Ramu originally. I think that if maybe there's some kind of mono lightning, mono Ramu deck, and it does have a neat little combo with this guy, but I'm not too sold. Not too sold yet. Leviathan, Lord of the Whirl, wonderful legend. Definitely what water needed. You can revive it with Lena. You can just play it for value. Upgrades all your Leviathans to bounce and kill. Aphmau is nice, <laughs> and I've got a playset of Van in a single box. If you insist. It's another card like Barrett. I think it's a bit better than Barrett for the time being, but uh, it's another card that's going to upgrade over time when they eventually give us some decent Sky Pirates. Gilgamesh FFBE continues the pattern of if you open a foil legend in a box, you're probably going to get a non-foil as well, and Valfodder. Sephiroth is reasonable, Shantotto is very good, I look forward to using it a great deal. Then we've got a foil jolt, and Sin, I was really surprised that Sin wasn't a legend actually, I just thought the text was weird enough. I think that legends are, yeah, they're usually balanced for power, but at the same time I think they're also balanced for sealed, you know, you put the weird text in sealed format so that you're not having to explain this weird card every single game all of the time. And I think it's at quite a low rarity for how odd its text is. Morleonis, good hero, and Begamnon, an acceptable foil. Last pack of the first box. I've not been doing the maths on how many legends I've opened yet. Uh, Tifa was the pre-release promo, but a lot of them have been damaged, so maybe people are going to be looking for this one. And Steiner, arguably the worst common in the set. I just think that there's so few decks that actively want to play a 
9k for 4 CP. I think he should have cost 2 with that restriction, or drawn a card, or had some ridiculous damage upgrade or something, or found you a VV from deck. I don't know. No point in theory crafting. Let's open some more boxes. Let's go for this one. So you're not tortured by seeing my terrible mic stand for too long. Oh, there's a certain cathartic relief to shredding off this wrapping. Let me tidy up the stuff here. We've got our full arts. You know what? I'm going to leave the full arts out if I can. But the yeah, the, the heroes and the legends and the foils from one box can all go off to one side. Next box, let's dive right in. We've got a Barrett. I'd be uh, semi disappointed if there wasn't one, to be fair. Foil Old Leonis, not too likely to be. Or Eld Leonis, I'm not too sure. I'll just call him old. He looks old. Don't we all after lockdown? For Lesifert, actually, uh, I expected to hate that card, but it's uh, it's a whole load better than it looked. Certainly in like pre-release, th there were so many really difficult things that it answered, and I think that removal you can just top deck and play is kind of nice. First Legend Garland, maybe my favorite legend this set for the the number of strange things it does. It, uh, it gives us yet another way to play fire. And uh, I'm, I'm still not too bored of fire, you know? It's, it's been uh, a really good deck since about Opus 11 or thereabouts. I'm not bored of it yet. It's interesting enough to play against and there's enough different ways to build it that I still find it tolerable. Good King Mogglemog is garbage. He, he was really let down. Very fun card, not a good card. Depends how competitively you're trying to take things. I can't deny there's a lot of reasonable Moogles in ice, but most of them have got implications outside of ice. So again, not too bad. Mostly because both of the water primals are very respectable. I definitely see myself playing with both of them. Trapdoor, that's us got our playset, and uh, Foil Rosh. I think Rosh was listening to me and uh, dissing him, and now I'm going to open nothing but Rosh in all my packs. Xenos, uh, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm warming to the fact that Xenos self mills you. I just wish there were slightly more viable category 14 really costly things in Fire and Ice, because like Xenos almost works in the Fire Ice for Stale deck, but just not quite enough yet. Typhon, very nice, even if it does look hideous. I think Typhon is maybe my second favourite card in the set. First is Gutsko. First, I think Gutsko is probably the strongest card in the set for how much it's going to warp games. Typhon is a close second. Putting something the fifth card down in your opponent's deck means it's not going to be seen for three turns. And three turns is a really long time in FFTCG terms. Another Leviathan. Sweet. That means uh, between pre-releases and now, I've got a playset of them. And, uh, and that's good. To be honest, I wonder if Lakshmi had enough text to be a legend. Checked. Very nice. Queen is interesting. It's exactly the sort of design space I like to see on commons and rares. Actually supplements some sort of weird tribal deck. Full Art Blue Mage. For a standard unit, I don't hate it. I think that it's uh, reasonably good for like card quality, reasonably good for card parity. I think the difference between that and a legend is a legend would play the monster straight onto the field. It's like Gao from Opus 4 is uh, still an okay card, but I don't think it needs to cost 5 anymore. Not with the pace of the game now. Hit that like button if you wish to print really good monsters again. I do. Not like Mombom. Can't see me using Mombom all that much. I desperately wish that Mombom had either a way to kill herself, or was multiplayable, or something like that. Just so that, or, or didn't hurt your own forwards. I think there's so much potential that was somewhat missed out on. There we go, another Larsa. Maybe some kind of Larsa Fasoya or Larsa Shoot Yourself deck is going to be reasonable. Got another Luso. Can't see me using him anytime soon. Problem is, too many of the FFTA two cards are standard units. Stuff like the sniper and whatnot. 
Foil Ifrit, that's definitely getting played though. And Kalbrena, it's possible too. Right now I think the only mono earth deck, and I think most of these monsters are only really playable in mono, the, pretty much the only mono earth deck that is competitively serious. Oh nice, Foil Legend. The only uh, mono earth deck that is particularly competitively serious is Monks. And they already have a good enough way of clearing out their old backups that I don't think they really need Kalbrena, but maybe there's something out there. Foil of Jang, our Lord and Saviour. And then a Golbez. A lot of the real heavy lifting cards in Lightning, stuff like Eloa, still viable, still a sticky threat that's very hard to block and uh, you, you kind of want to get it off the field so it can't threaten the special. I just like that Ovjang lets you recur those. Said Previa target if you're into that. Bismarck, Foil Legend. Oh, beautiful. Love this card so much. I think this is maybe my third favourite card of the set. Maybe a little bit pushed. It's uh, very, very good at what it does. And I think uh, there's not many wind decks that don't want this. Seems that they've been increasingly pushing the return your own dude to hand for benefit kind of thing in wind. And there are so many on entry abilities in wind, whether it's mono wind or, or wind plus something, that are so good that you just want to play them over and over and over. You know what, Bismarck, I'm going to put in the, the legend pile, not the foil pile. Stuff like Mayuni has always been a kind of a return your stuff to hand for benefit card in wind, but, ooh, foil garland, nice. That's only gotten better and better recently with things like Althea. Foil you sail. I know a lot of people have been saying how good that art is going to look. And there you have it. It's a pretty good looking foil. Rosa, great for Storm. Probably great for Mono Wind. Vata, Althea, Althea, Vata, I don't know. Seems pretty easy to reach that Storm count. Mashuri, I think I've got my play set off now. Good job, I've got a few different decks you can go in. It's actually a really cool looking uh, Mashuri Woff list. I think that Rain and Lan and Co from Opus 10, Rain in particular, is, oh nice, uh, there's my other full art. I keep getting interrupted by pretty new cards. Yeah, um, Mashuri Woff, uh, I think that uh, there's a number of things that are kind of cool here. I think the hint is that the new Ifrita summon is part Woff or fr from category Woff. And uh, yeah, you, you, you play a bunch of summons, you start exiling your own summons from the bin, draw a bunch of cards, it's pretty good. New Ifrita is a really good card when it only costs four. That's kind of the crux of it. Foil Octomammoth, not bad. And another Gilgamesh FFBE. One of these days I'll find a deck that I really like with it. Working on a few different ones just now, but it feels difficult to meet the seven elements requirement and the play enough ice cards to get them into play requirement. Like a lot of rainbow decks, it's probably going to turn into like an earth wind shell or something. Noctis, cool card. Being able to play Regis uh, outside his normal timing restrictions and for less than his usual cost is great. Let me assure you that. It's also the YYT spoiler video. There we go, Legend Cloud. Not a full art, but you know. Never say never. Foil Preach as well. Nearing the end of box number two, got another Titan, Lord of Crags. Is it just me or do there seem like there's more legends in this box? Foiled human. It's no full art. I do really like the card. I've got a certain softness and uh, fondness for sort of ping and break a damaged guy sort of cards. I always liked Orlando, certainly after Orlando was a particularly viable card. I still played it. I still liked it. It caught fair decks off guard and was a very good value card in fair games all the while. And uh, Yumin being able to do that. Yumin is of a much better size to do things like Miyuni and Althea with. So really keen on it. Hoping that Bismarck can do something to revive that kind of deck. Oh, Althead is a legend. I kind of forgot that part. Never even commented on it at the time. So this time we got a couple of maybe less desirable full arts, although I do like Jolt. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 legends otherwise. Excellent. Very pleased. Foil to the bottom, legends to the top. Shove this off to the side and we'll get cracking with box 3. 
Let me know if you had any particularly good or exciting pre-release experiences. I always like to know the improbable things that people pulled. Make me feel worse about my own pills. I thought that this pre-release for the first time in a long while or the sealed environment was actually quite favourable for all elements. Maybe some elements were just less pushed than others but I felt like there was actually good water and ice things in a sealed environment and I rarely think those are elements that naturally work particularly well in sealed. They just don't often have enough like aggressive cards or reactive cards. Maybe not enough exciting bombs but I saw a lot of different decks at pre-releases. Foil Zerobus. Very nice. And Camelot as our hero. The rest of the stuff I think we'll have seen enough copies of by now that the shine has worn off. Red 13. Sweet. And Golbez. Relatively sweet. Ultros and another Bismarck. That makes a place out for me. That means I'm going to be playing a whole lot of Storm this opus. Bismarck is quite a nice alternative to Cactuar in Wind Lightning as well. I just can't wait to play Barbaricia from Opus 3, reduce something to 1k, and then tap it to Bismarck to kill something. That just seems like it's going to be a, a fun thing to do. Stick Bismarck up there as the legend from this box. Foil Gutsko. I think that means I've now got a playset of He. And Stern Leonis. I can never have too many of them. I think there's probably like a good really aggressive fire ice list, but basically anything that's comfortable playing a high number of forwards will probably enjoy that. I don't know if like 29, 29 maybe the number. You want his action ability to be live so that you can save your field from like a board wipe. You'll feel smart when you do that. Your opponent goes Susano, you go pitch four cards from Ben, everything lives. Nah, cool, Jet. I hated Jekt at first. I thought, oh, no one's ever going to play this. It's massive, it's got a ridiculous special, it doesn't really do enough on entry. And uh, partly I really underrated how crazy that special is. I think that special actually outvalues Illua from Opus 5 for how much a single special does that just costs you a card in hand. So yeah, like if you can ever trigger Jekt to do something on entry, you're kind of going to be ahead on board for a very long time because your opponent is going to evaluate every single little thing they do for fear of that special. You can never make a risky play again. Barrett, there we go. I was hoping I wouldn't open too many of him because, well, he's a pre-release promo, you know? I'm going to be drowning in them. The, the full art promos are going to be more common than the non-foil legends. Ultimecia and another Gilgamesh going to slightly cross my fingers I don't open too many more because I'm not convinced it's going to be a card that's just useful in everything. I think you need to be playing a minimum of five elements for him to feel particularly worthwhile. Luso, alright I guess, one of these days, and a foil camel up. I'll enjoy that at least. I like these sort of fair ice cards. Comparable to Fissilus I suppose. Golbez looks cool, Steiner doesn't look cool and certainly isn't playable but you know. Got to get our foil quota somewhere. Dark Knight and Geshe. Geshe's art is pretty hideous. There we go, another cloud. Maybe take it as a, a sign I'm going to get that elusive full art. We can hope. Got a foil one in pre-release. I expect the full art is going to look good. Better than those kind of mediocre, very dark ones from Opus 11. Foil Rosa is another foil that I know a lot of people have been hyping up. Very pretty. Can't wait to play the card. Ravis and Trapdoor. Almost sounds like an old English pub. Full Art Chivalry. Ah, nice. Very good card. Th there's a lot of incredible implications of what it can do. Stack it on a board wipe, you're going to feel good. Stack it on, uh, yeah, stuff like Baralai, stuff like Philia. Doesn't work with Susano, which is a shame because Susano's that bit cheaper. Cheaper in terms of CP anyway. Who do we 
have here? Oh, I thought that was a full art cloud for a second. No, it's a full art Calbrena. Arguably less attractive than cloud. Foil Leviathan. That's a beauty. Very excited to play this a few different places. And Chantot is our hero. Time Mage and Monleonis. That's another card that I definitely think is going to go in Monks. Maybe not Colbrenna, definitely Monleonis. Puppet Master, I was hoping that wasn't going to be the full art there. Probably the, the least important full art in the set. And then we've got Shenryu. Rather dark, rather dark in its art, but you know, it's probably got some utilities. I would be surprised if it saw absolutely zero play. It's just a little bit high rolly for me. I think a lot of the time I'm going to wish I drew the two cards. Full Art Shenryu, there we go. So on entry you kill, well you do 10,000 damage to all the opponents forwards of cost 3, 6 and 9. Does a real number on traditional samurai decks. You kill the Tenzin, you kill the Cyan, you kill all the Magissa targets in the deck. Ravana, another foil legend. Don't think I've opened one of them yet. Ravana again looks fun, but you don't just stick it in any old deck and expect to get value. You're going to have to try and set up a 4 damage OTK. And I think if you're planning on attacking that many times in a turn, you're maybe going to appreciate Wall from Opus 4 turning off EX Prest or something because it's a nice way to end your fun. Another Rush. I definitely spoke too soon when I said no more Rush. I just wish he had a special or something. Another Rosa for some Storm fun. And Adele for, well, no fun at all. Sticky, hasty bodies aren't really my thing. Al said though, yeah, uh, quite an oppressive and aggressive card. I definitely underrated him. It's uh, it's difficult for uh, aggressive decks to keep the tempo sometimes in FFTCG between EX bursts and how easy it is to just draw into your answers, I suppose. But Al said generates an awful lot of pressure and uh, basically says that your opponent's forwards aren't going to be uh, any use for blocking your aggro deck. They've got to draw into the removal of their board wipes or something. Omega and a foil of Frita. Seems like another good box for Legend Count, at least. Sniper and Matchery. My goodness, how many of Matchery have I opened? I think she's comparable for Citra. We, we, we kind of needed a little bit more help for summons in the game. I, I, I don't think there's many summons that feel oppressive at the moment. But knocking one CP off a bunch of stuff is cool. If you're not going to miss Citra's EX burst and summon recursion, give her a go, you know. I think the worst thing you can do at the start of a new opus is just assume that your old deck is going to put in a couple of new things and just play the same way it always did. I would rather throw myself in at the deep end and try out a bunch of new stuff and, uh, you know, be a little bit more aggressive. Proxy things up with your mates, you know, at, at, at local, so long as it's not a paid game and someone's going to feel bad about losing to a proxy deck, you should absolutely proxy up decks and try out things, figure out what cards you want to buy or want to open. And now a word from our sponsor. I got these boxes in wonderful condition, very very good postage from Madger's Market. There is a link in the description, what a guy, uh, very well stocked shop and uh, very reasonable rates on multiple boxes and whatnot as well, so I uh, can't wait to see him again in person when we get events, maybe over the course of Opus 14, I'm kind of hopeful. Now that our ad break is over, no, I'm not getting monet monetized kickbacks for that. My full art so far, I'll just shove up here, and then we'll scoop up our legends and our foils and our heroes for me to analyse and put into a binder later. This is the part where I start crossing my fingers for full art garland and whatnot. Foil Typhon, that's pretty good. It's a card I know I'm going to use. It's a card I know is really good. I think it's great in YRP. Shuffle away your opponent's Yishtola so they can't counter your Fina Veil for basically anything in wind. Any kind of cool combo deck. Crack 
cracking. Honestly, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at how reasonable it is, certainly in a sealed environment. I saw the rest of the Chaos Fiends first and thought, oh, okay, here we go, you discard a job Chaos to return one of your opponent's forwards to hand, and then it says, you know, Pot of Greed instead. Pleasantly surprising. Susano, big Susan. I've been told it's pronounced Susano by some FF14 aficionados, but I prefer Susan. Susano. I just like the name Susan. Emperor and another Omega. There we go. First legend from this box. I hope it's useful. It's it's uh it's not even as like resource depriving as something like Neo X Death, but that's probably a good thing. It just lets you put pressure on in a different kind of way. I think that these sorts of forwards that can deal unblockable damage. Oh, I thought that was a full heart. Nice foil, though. Look at that uh, foiling in the background. Foily Trapdoor makes my third, I believe between pre-releases and now. Lightning looks like it's in a better shape than it's been in a very long time. The Kingsclave package I think are maybe a little bit dated now. But there's plenty of other ways you could play it. Ravana, another legend. And a Tonbury that I'll probably never use. There's already better cantrips in water. It just takes way too long a time for this to be any meaningful kind of card selection. Foil Gesho. Foil doesn't actually look too bad. The art is hideous, of course, but, you know, the background's detailed enough. As in, sparkly enough. It's totally not detailed detailed. Lots of artists will be correcting me in the comments. Another Rosa, but I can't get too mad at uh, opening multiple copies of a invariably meta card. Kefka. I've still got reasonable hopes for him. I know that a lot of people haven't been a, a fan of, of how he looks, but I think that the, the payoff of dulling and freezing something each turn is quite high. Shinryu, legend, pretty good. So I'm expecting to get a non-foil cloud in this box if the pattern is anything to be held to because, well, because of the foil cloud. Haven't seen any full arts this box though, that's, I wouldn't say cause for concern, but certainly cause for anticipation. Don Corneo, Foil, Disgusting Men, and Typhon, a slightly less disgusting man. Goblins, I don't know, kind of cute or something. I thought that was two heroes there, but no, it's Rosh, my old pal. Maybe if I'm nicer to him, I'll stop opening them. We've got Malaris, totally not Marilith, Mal I don't know. Names in Final Fantasy, huh? Barrett, okay. Foil Legend looks alright. Not entirely sure the art is worthy of a full art. I don't really care for the trend of Category 7 characters facing away from you when you're trying to talk to them. Cloud, New Tifa, said Highwind. Oh, Legacy Wall. Look at that incredibly long shin. Very nice. It's a card that didn't see an awful lot of play for a very long time until uh, the, the relatively famous now Chris Matiski's OTK deck, the uh, give everything haste, draw your entire deck, Tilica Loop. I think people call it Loop or Tilica Loop or whatever. And Wall is a really important ingredient in that deck so that you don't die to random EX burst because typically you're not going to do an awful lot of damage until the turn you combo off. Foily Larsa. pretty and that means I'm probably going to open Larsa as the other or uh, another legend in this box. Foil Queena and a Shantoto. Munejing. Is that not the capital of China? Dark Elf. 
I uh, rated that card really poorly at first, and now I've gone from thinking it's a 1 out of 5 to a 2 out of 5, because I totally missed it doesn't take combat damage. I just assumed that it would be damage from summons and abilities above 9k it doesn't take, but, you know, combat damage as well. I imagine there's going to be some kind of stompy deck that really resents that this guy doesn't die in combat unless you in him or find some other way around. It's just amusing, you know. I like these cards that politicise a sealed environment. Royal League of Branth and a Legend Bismarck. Sweet. Just in case anyone is uh, affected by this video uh, or, or pays enough attention, Bismarck and Leviathan do trigger their when effect if they are returned to hand. So Leviathan does get to see itself go back to hand. If Bismarck you know, gets returned to hand as well, then Bismarck does see that happen, so you do get the draw or the, the 9k reduction effect. If you want a further example of why this is the case, or a more historic example, there's the Opus 10 starter Kefka as well, that when it attacks, you can sacrifice one of your forwards, blow up one of your opponent's forwards, you may pay one to draw a card. Kefka can see himself die from that effect as well, that has always been the case. So, just in case you want a, an example of that in practice. As if anyone uses that Kefka. Right, uh, we've got a Shiva, not too bad. I think I, I like the primal background a little bit more in person. I wasn't a big fan of it when uh, the, the spoilers first went up a, a week or so ago, but the foils look pretty good and the, the non-foils look alright as well. Alright. There we go, the prophecy is complete. We've got a non-foil cloud. That means there should be a Larsa in this box somewhere. So a foil for me to not use until it becomes broken. One of these days, right? Golbez, probably an interesting foil. There will definitely be some kind of interesting deck around him, but I don't know. Uh, it seems inherently high roly. You're going to have to play uh, a lot of forwards of cost three or less for his effect to be somewhat reliable. Then again, I think if it was like, look at the top two cards, you may play a forward from among them. Golbez would have been too strong. I just like the way you can sack four things and it could be your backups to then steal one of your opponent's forwards and that can even happen during your opponent's turn. That's cool. More Gesho. Quite keen on Fire Lightning, certainly this opus. Got a lot of very useful tools. Barret as a legend and Lakshmi as well. Oh, how pretty. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I've only opened one full art here. Hmm, Ardent was supposed to be two per box. I wonder what this could be. It's not a full art, yay! So we've got Typhon as a hero and we've got Shoes Out. So I, I don't know if we're maybe back to... Why is Hojo in the Legend pile? That's freaking me out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I put a Legend in a non-Legend pile? I'll figure it out later. Ah yeah, Shiva, there we go. We've got Shiva. Did I do it twice? Tons of times? Did I put a full art somewhere it wasn't meant to be? I'm sure you'll notice if you're watching. Okay, let's get cracking with the unpacking. Two boxes left. And I'm going to save myself a little bit of time now, or a little bit of your headache listening to these terrible sounds. I'm just going to take the cellophane off both of the boxes just now. Come on. I'm not going to be greedy and ask for a cloud, but I would like a full art garment. I just love the card. It's a lot of quite interesting card design this set. Okay, we've got a uh, big Susan and we've got a foily cloud of darkness and a usual selection of pretty reasonable other cards. Noctis and Jekt. Really looking forward to finding out if Jekt has a particularly stable home. One of those specials that it just looks so powerful and so game warping that you want to play more copies of Jekt just in case, just because. It helps as well that he's like a Gabranth search, you know, hold that over your opponent's head turn off all kinds of things. Hope it's playable. 
two roses in a row. I guess that's what you call a rosa. I'm sorry. Van, first legend of the box. Let me make that a little bit more clear for you and move this box back. And a foily amalgia. The primal support backups are pretty good. I kind of wish the Sylph did something a little bit more than just damage reduction, but I get that it's trying to play into what uh, Big Ravana does. Another Leviathan, sweet. I will most certainly be using it in a variety of places. Shinryu and Luzaf. I've not mentioned Luzaf yet. It's a card that uh, my opinion of it keeps going up and keeps going down. Backups with back attack, historically, uh, you, you play them more like summons than like backups. You're not going to feel too good if you just play this as a backup. But uh, yeah, being able to bounce one of your forwards back to hand, maybe trigger an on exit ability, maybe save something from removal, and then your opponent loses a forward as well. I think that it has a potentially really high swingy point, and uh, cards with a high ceiling will always see some level of play. Always. Of Jing. And Zeromus. I think Zeromus could have been a legend. I don't think I would have noticed if Zeromus had been the legend and Alcid had been the hero. Don't know what card that says more about. Definitely very hard to stabilise through an attacking Zeromus. Dark Elf. I was worried for a second. I thought that was going to be one of my full arts. It's a good card, but I don't know if I want to commit to a full art of it. Foily Zidane and a COD. Big MJ and more Machiri. I'll never be too mad at that. Ravana's kind of cool. I'm noticing there's not any foil legends in this box so far. Oh, there we go. I, I think I summoned one. Let me know in the comments your favourite full art this set. Oh, I'm, I'm guessing nobody would have said Bagamnon, but there we go. That's one of them probably playable in some kind of stompy deck. Uh, I would be surprised if there isn't like uh, an aggressive earth deck now that we've got Cloud and Bagamnon and obligate these blocks early on. Probably something in there. Calbrenna as a hero. Kefka Chantal. Ah, oh, and Fuller Eloa. How pretty. She's another card that's gone up quite considerably in my estimations. I just wasn't sure that uh, she would do an awful lot as a 3 CP 1k originally, but you know, who wants to spend removal on uh, when attack trigger of something that's got haste and 1 CP? It's just really hard to time and uh, not get blown out by. Foil Ramu, that's cool. And another Luso. Self is reasonable. Prish is definitely reasonable too, you know. It's a target for Star Sybil. Star Sybil's a target for it. It's just a shame that the relationship doesn't extend much beyond that. Sidane, how nice. I think that if you fall behind in a game with Sidane, you are kind of just going to stay behind. Looks like a really compelling card to give haste to and just keep shoving your opponent's things back in their hand. And we'll see if it extends beyond that as a a competitive staple archetype. I'll give it a go. I do really like the sort of Realm Zidane's uh, Water Wind Monsters deck. Foily Omega. So I think the odds are in favour of there being another Omega somewhere in this box. Lazifert, the Sage, and Octomammoth, the Octopus. 
Did anyone else get a weird kind of joy at seeing two job octopus in a row in binder order? I know I did. Bart says an octopus two different ways. Blue mage, neat. And Bismarck, even more neat. Very, very excited to see what he can do. Just generates really intense skill based games. Geo and Gesho. Just me or do I really seem to have not opened many garlands in these boxes so far? Quina and Shiva. Shiva's another weird one that I think people have been kind of, I don't know about sleeping on, but not really rating all that highly. There's so much text on there and so many nuances of timing. Very hard guard to play against. There aren't many effects that freeze entire fields worth of forwards. There's Vayne's special from Opus 2, and there's the fairly terrible Ultimecia from the, the starter deck. That card always promises so much and delivers so little. I think the big thing with Shiva is flickering it during your opponent's turn. Not an awful lot can do that. There we go. Garland. How nice. I think I made him a beer. We'll trade Xenos for more garlands. You and Infoil. That's not too bad. And uh, Sin, who probably will see some use somewhere as well. I think that once you're on five backups, or if you've got this surplus of CP, then you'll appreciate Sin being one of these infinite kind of resources. COD, that's pretty good. And Montleonis. Definitely going to try playing him in Monks or some other uh, forward spam deck. Last box. Another Barret. And here's hoping it's the only one in the box. Red 13, that's nice. Tifa, alright I suppose. Seen it already as the pre-release promo though. Sahagan, yeah, it's great. I think it's maybe the primal backup that does the most unique thing as an action ability, and there are so many good primals. I think that like being able to scry the right card to the top of your deck for Lakshmi to draw, that looks pretty good and uh, pretty powerful in Pauper. Ultros and Calbrenna. The other Octopus. Ultros, I mean. Don't want to imagine Kalbrenna with eight legs. Caius is cool, Gutsko is more so. Do you say Gutsko or Gutsko? In my head it's Gutsko, I don't know why. I don't think I played enough of three to be able to appreciate it. It's like the difference between Hien and Hein. Ah, there we go, another Barret. Oh, I didn't tidy up my legends between boxes. Makes it a little bit harder to statistically track I suppose but there we go another Shiva Lady of Frost and a foil Nath I think Lightning has been crying out for something better than Louis Swa, Alice A, Alphinod to fill up its CP and it's got enough break zone synergies that I think Nath is going to be okay another Garland nice very pleased at that another forward with such a ridiculously cheap special that Seems hard not to try and use. Luge and Rosh. Luge is so unusual. I really hope they mess more with these Luge for Dola style of effects. Sort of uh, keywords that you gain but persist between turns. Ketone. Nice. Unless you're diabetic. And Jekt. Dark Knight looks reasonable in Monks as well, because uh, I think that really smart people who play against Monks, you try not to deal the first point of damage too soon, and that's why Cecil and why Dark Knight are so good in that deck, because it's, it's a, an actually reasonable way of dealing yourself a point of damage that then puts Yang's damage 1 auto ability online. Foily Mashery. And another Octodad. Just about halfway through the final box. Corsair, it's okay. It's also a full art. I hope I've not tempted fate by saying that out loud and now I'm going to open one. 
Fuller Omega. Okay, probably worse consolation prizes than that. It's quite a striking card. It's another point of damage that your opponent maybe won't see coming, or cards that obligate do something about this, or weird things are going to happen are kind of cool. 5 CP 10k as well. Reasonable size. Foil Legend as well. Titan Lord of Crags. Looks kind of like a really scary Goron from the Legend of Zelda series. Full Heart Calbrenna. There we go. Well, it's Earth. It's no cloud, but it's Earth. I like that the clouds are a slightly different kind of foil. They really kind of stand out, or, you know, steam or whatever it is it's emitting. Baby dust. That's another uh, mechanic that I find very interesting. These, uh, when they become dull abilities like Sniper's got and the Time Mage's got, I don't think either of those cards specifically are very competitively viable, but I do appreciate what the card is trying to do. Tuaroni. Probably the best of the 1 CP or, or you know the scaling over time monsters this set, but the bar is so shockingly low you uh, you'd break your back limboing under it. Lich is interesting, it's also a very weird foil because that little bit of background underneath one of the arms isn't foil and that's uh, just really kind of weird for a foil. You, usually they're particularly good at spotting these things. Unless it's maybe just some of them that are misprinted, I don't know. Ananta, and another Montleonis. Card's going to be everywhere. It's nice to see the mono decks get a bit more of a push. And it's something that I feel about this set was that the pre-release was fun, but I can't help but feel it would be a much better draft, just because there are some cards that look for mono devotion, they're looking for certain other mechanics to be around that mostly just exist in a mono deck. Cloud of Darkness, that's rather cool, and a big proto Adam. I just wish he'd said discard a card somewhere on his text. If it was discard a card when he dies, or discard a card on... I, d I, d I don't know, somewhere. Maybe it would be too, t too powerful probably if he discarded a card on entry. Yeah, another Titan Lord of Crags. I think that he will get passively better when we get another Earth Primal because for the time being I feel a bit weird using the Cobalt backup just for him. Partly you're going to get less free CP over the course of the game, partly, I don't know, Cobalt's effect is maybe not amazing to begin with. Foily Alcid, rather pretty. It's one of the full arts I'm led to believe this set. Zeromus. Warrior of Light wins my own personal award for the, my, the the card I like least in the set. It just looks like it, it has so much text that supports a really bad tribe of cards in a really uninteresting and very Opus 1 sort of way. I'm, I'm so not wowed by it. White Mage and another Lusso. Currently we just don't have enough good FFTA2 cards, but you know, give it a year or two and I think Lusso might be a pretty good card in a a free sort of way. Fundamentally he's kind of like the starter deck Yuri Anger, but for a much weaker for now tribe, but sees two and a half times deeper into the deck and you know, it's a good EX burst. Adds characters, not just forwards. Has potential. Our very pretty Wooza, nice. And Camelot, who's pretty in his own way I'm sure. Muraga, not blown away by him. I think that if he, you know, took two forwards back to hand, or you know, if if the EX was just a Kusith or something, then it would be a little bit better. But his timing is too nuanced. Mashuri is another hero, and we're down to the low single digits. What are we on? One, two, three, four, five packs left of a case. So I'm just going to go and get rid of that box. Not expecting any more full arts, but could be some nice legends. Efrita, cool. Prish. Somewhat cool. Kind of got a million of them by now, though. Time Mage and Mom Bomb. Puppet 
Master, and I, I thought that said Veil vale for it first. When I first saw the card, I was like, oh my goodness. They made Veil vale for a real boy. Bard, very cute. Quite a eye catching foil. And another Susano. Seems like I've not seen too many of them in the last couple of boxes. And do we end on a high with another legend? Uh, yes, there we go. Larsa, how nice. And Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this unboxing. Much appreciated. Let me know your good pulls, let me know the cards you're looking for, and uh, please stay tuned throughout the course of Opus 14 because we're going to have a whole load of decks and a whole load of exciting stuff to share, and hopefully a return to organised locals and the ability to record in-person games again. Local scene has been getting a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more well attended in Scotland, so if you're ever in the area, we play pretty much every Monday and every Saturday in two different places, so get in touch and stay in touch. Stay safe, enjoy Opus 14, this has been Steve D of the YYT, speak soon, bye bye.